Hello everybody, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today I am going to be unhauling some books. So it's been a while since I did my last unhaul, it's been about five or six months and I have 25 books to talk to you guys about today. I donate the majority of my books to charity shops with the exception of if any of my friends would like any of these books. They tend to be like the subscription box editions if it's a book that I've read and didn't like. I'll pass those on to friends. I am filming this quite a bit in advance actually. I'm really ahead on my content at the minute so all of these books are gone by the time you're seeing this video. But I have split these down into four sections today. The first stack is the self-destructing books from 2021 that I revisited last month. We also have a stack of duplicates, so books that I now have a better edition of. There is a couple of books that I've been sent as part of rep packages and things like that that I'm just really not interested in. And the biggest stack that we have is the books that I've read and didn't like or don't care enough about to keep. So we're gonna start with those self-destructing books because I can whiz through these real quick and if you want any more information on these then I did make a video where I talk about the ones that I've read, like why I'm unhauling them and all of that kind of stuff. But we have Shadow Scent, The Darkest Bloom by P.M. Freestone, Enchanté by Gita Trelease, The Forest of Hands and Teeth by Carrie Ryan, The Good Hog by Joseph Elliott, The Fandom by Anna Day, and then the ones from that video that I have read, Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World by Ashley Herring Blake. I enjoyed this one, but I don't need to keep it. The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. Enjoyed this one, but I don't keep mysteries or thrillers when I've read them. And Nerve by Gian Ryan. Did not like this one. So the ones that I've received as part of rep packages that I'm just not interested in. There are only two of these. They are both book of the month and I don't know too much about them. I read the synopsis at the time and they're just very different from what I typically read. But the first one is The Magnolia Palace by Fiona Davis. I think this one is historical fiction. Yes, the main character lost her mother in the Spanish flu outbreak of 1919. Not really a fan of historical fiction unless there's another element to the story that I'm interested in. And then this one, I'm not even sure what genre I would say it is, but it is hard. Harlem Shuffle by Colton Whitehead and this one is a high story set in New York. We then have five duplicates that I'm unhauling. The first one is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. This one is the book of the month edition but I did get the Illumicrate edition in I think it was the February box which is a much prettier edition. I don't really like the US cover of this book. I think that the covers, like the Illumicrate one's different from the UK, but the UK and the US covers of this book give very different vibes. Like if I saw this in a shop, I don't think I'd be interested in it, but if I saw the UK edition, it seems like something I would read. But this one is an adult fantasy about this island full of sprites. And I think that the sprites are usually quite mischievous in nature. That is until girls start going missing and people think the sprites are responsible. So they invite a bard who's originally from the island to come back and help to find the missing girls because everybody knows that sprites like music. We also have my paperback edition of Skyward by Brandon Sanderson which I do really like these paperbacks so I was tempted to keep it but I do have the hardback now since they've reprinted it. This is Brandon Sanderson's YA sci-fi series following a girl called Spencer who wants nothing more to be a fighter pilot but her father was a fighter pilot and he deserted so now Spencer's family are treated horribly like they're not allowed to have real jobs or anything and everyone is doing what they possibly can to stop Spencer from joining the flight academy. I do really love Skyward, the first book anyway. I didn't love the second book as much. I do, these are gorgeous. I love Brandon Sanderson UK paperbacks, but I kept this until I needed the space on my Sanderson shelf. But my Sanderson shelf is full now, so sadly this had to go. We then have the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. This is one of my favorite series. The first book is The Bear and the Nightingale, and it is an adult historical fantasy that takes place in Russia before it was Russia. So it has a lot of Russian folklore in here and it is also set, I think it's like the 13th or 14th century when Russia and the Mongolian Empire were at war. So it combines the folklore with the war elements across the trilogy and I love this series. What I do have, you can see it just here, I have the Fairy Loot Special Editions now so I don't need the paperbacks. And the last stack is the ones that I have read and either did not enjoy or do not have any reason to keep. 
keep the first one of those is actually five books and it is the selection series by Kira Cass. So for one of the installments of the series in a week vlogs that I do, I read the entire selection series. It was a decent time, it was reasonably entertaining. The only reason I wanted to read these books anyway was to, not to say that I've read them but to have read them because this is one of those like nostalgia series that everybody seems to have read. It's kind of split up into two series so you have the first three and then the second five. But the first book in this series, The Selection, follows a girl called America who lives in a dystopian society that's separated by the jobs that you have. So her family belonged to like the artist class and all of her family members have to be artists in some way. Every time there is an eligible prince coming of age they hold a selection where they take one girl from every region in the country and they all go to the palace to compete for the prince's affection so it's like the bachelor meets, is it the Hunger Games it says on the first book? It doesn't say, it's like a, a dystopian romance, it was a good time but like I'm never gonna reread it and I didn't love it that much. I think the highest rating one of the books got was three stars. Another series that I read and sadly did not love is the Dream Blood Duology by N.K. Jemisin. They're kind of more like companion novels. They do follow on from each other but there's a 10 year gap in between them. This world centers around dream magic and you have gatherers who can extract dream blood from people and then sharers use it to heal people. In this world there are different opinions on the magic. Some cultures and countries think it's barbaric but we're predominantly following the Gujarin who like actively practice this magic. Both of these books have very similar plot lines where people are dying in the nightmare realm and everyone's trying to figure out why that's happening. There's just so much about this series that just wasn't for me. They're not even necessarily bad books. The magic system in here is a soft magic system. It's quite intangible and follows like the illogical nature of dreams I guess. I prefer a hard magic system. It's very plot focused with seemingly the world being built around the plot so you'll have really interesting things that only come into play to support plot points and then kind of fade away again whereas I prefer every little detail to be relevant and stuff like that. It's also very political and because it's not character driven and there's a lot of dialogue and conversation in here, it just wasn't really rooting for anybody. So it just all of the things that I like in fantasy, this kind of was the opposite. So it, it just wasn't a hit for me. It's just not a series for me. But I do think that I will have a better look with either The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms or The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. We then had the L Crate edition of Legend Born by Tracy Dion. I gave this one a good go. I think I got halfway into it. It just wasn't for me. This is an Arthurian legend retelling. I don't even remember a whole ton about this right now. But this girl goes to this like advanced summer program where she sees a group of people like hunting demons. Like kind of the beginning of Shadow Hunters is the catalyst for the story. And they try to wipe her memory, but it doesn't work. So she remembers and goes to investigate into like what these people are doing. The reason why she wants to do that is because she realizes that after her mother died, which is not long prior to the start of this, the first chapter is about her mother dying. She seems to have had her memories wiped. So she joins this secret society on campus called the Legend Born who are all descendants of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table to try and get to the bottom of what happened to her mother and the reason why her mother was killed. I just didn't like it. There was a lot in this and it wasn't focusing on the bits that I was actually more interested in. The way that the magic system is described in here is like an info dump that happens in like two chapters and then shortly after that you have a new approach to the magic system that's also info dumped in two chapters. So the information was just too much at once and then the bulk of the story was focusing on things that I was less interested in when I would have preferred more of like a gradual introduction to the magic system and then the alternate way of accessing magic in this world as well. I just didn't like it very much sadly but I am sending this to Ro from Wandering Three Worlds who is obsessed with this book. We then have The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson which I read last year and now remember nothing about. I I think the reason why I didn't like this is that I hated the dialogue, that was it. This is a horror about a house called Hill House and there's a guy who's investigating the paranormal supposed like ghost activity at this house. So he invites a group of people who he thinks are like open to the supernatural because of experiences they've had in their past to help him um, conduct this investigation because I think he's writing a book. The dialogue in here is very much like Tally Ho 1950s irritating middle class. I hated the dialogue. It was just inane and nonsensical to me. While 
it was unsettling in elements. The way that the atmosphere is built in this book is through things like run-on sentences and things like not making sense and it, it's just that the horror was very much portrayed in the writing style but it's not a writing style that I enjoy. I'm not sure how I feel about the ending. So yeah I read it, it was fine, didn't love it, it's gone. And the last book that I'm unhauling today, I'm kind of sad that I didn't like this one but it is Deal with the Elf King by Elise Kova. I really wanted to love this, it's gorgeous. It's a, well it's an elven romance but like a fairy romance. This is very much like an introduction to fantasy romance. So if you don't love a whole ton of smut and you don't like dark romances or if you're new to fantasy romance and you don't like dark romance, this is probably a book for you but it is just not a book for me. I just found it to be very predictable. I didn't necessarily feel tension in it. It's just a very basic romantic story structure whereas I really like my dark romance in general but dark fantasy romance especially or like an epic plot line where the stakes are really high and this was more of like a sweeter like kind of slow burn. Is it an enemies to lovers? Kind of. We're following this human girl who is a healer. Every so often the elf king takes a bride and then the bride goes to live in the elven realm which is like through the veil that's in this town where the main character lives and um, they live out the rest of their existence there until they die and then the king takes a new human bride and the reason why he does this is because the exchange balances the human and the elven realm and keeps like the magic stable and all of this kind of stuff so the main character goes into this not wanting to because she wants to be a healer and like further her career which like good on her but um she starts to like unravel the practices that necessitate the taking of this human queen and that kind of stuff so like it it just didn't do it for me. It wasn't spicy enough, essentially. But this may, if you're, like I said, if you're new to romance, if you don't like smart and you don't like dark romance, you might enjoy this one. So those are the 25 books that I'm going to be unhauling this time around. I don't know when my next one haul will be the next time I have a big old stack of books. I imagine that there will probably be one towards like maybe late summer or something because that tends to be at like the speed that I generate a stack of books to unhaul. But I am doing TBR 500 this year and I haven't decided, I've failed because I bought 18 books from a charity shop not long ago because I just couldn't resist. So I've definitely, I'm definitely going to have failed that but I can't decide whether I'm going to unhold down to 500 if I'm way over 500. I guess it depends what that final number will be but you could be seeing a massive unhaul from me towards the middle of December which is a long way away I know. We'll see what happens. A lot can change between now and then but down in the comments I don't know. I don't know what you can say to me in an unhaul because I don't want you to tell me that I've unhauled your favourite book because that would be sad. But aside from that, please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna. If you head into my description box, you'll find a link to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those, as well as a link to my Bookish Candle website, the Instagram for that, and a 10% off discount code. That's it from me today, guys. Bye! Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate You say you will go where nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no